She is everything. A woman, a warrior, a wonder. A mother, a grandmother, mentor, auntie, stepmother, or any other way to say mom. She is the calm in stormy seasons. She brings peace, and when she speaks, she says everything. She encourages, captivates, sets us straight when we go astray, and we can never repay her. She is favored and faithful, and facing the future with a smile and an open hand, an open heart, an open home. She is bold, brave, never afraid to tell us what we need to hear. She is near, even when she's miles away. She is present, a gift, a grace, a goodness that cannot be reckoned. She is respected, refined, resilient over time, and time and time again, she proves her beauty is more than skin deep. She is brilliant. She is becoming and believing for the best, even in the face of the worst. She works and she wins, even when the odds are against her. She is strong, steady, ready for anything, and she does everything. All the things that only she can do. She is true, tried, trusted. She embodies comfort, compassion, joy and gladness are her definition. Patience and kindness, her disposition. She loves her children like it's nobody's business, but she makes it her business. And we all bear witness that she gives everything she has to everyone she has been given. And it is written that beauty will flee and charm will mislead, but a mother will always be and do and give because she is everything. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Scripture says, I waited patiently on the Lord. And he inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up, also out of a horrible pit. Out of the miry clay, he set my feet on a rock, and he established my goal. God is good. Y'all going to say it all the time? And all the time, God is good. Amen. I'm so happy to be here today. I'm so happy to be able to bring you a short word. Um, Thank my pastor for having this kind of confidence in me. We are blessed with such an awesome pastor. A man of God that you can trust. You can trust him, you know. I've known Pastor Rick. Last month would be 49 years we've been friends. And he is consistently just what you see. What you see is what you get. And I thank God for him. Thank God for the light he's been in my life. Thank God for the honors that he's getting. He deserves more, in my opinion. Amen? So, I'm just here. Let me get started. Won't be before you long. Gracious Heavenly Father, You are God, and beside thee, there is no other. We thank you today for such an awesome place to worship. We thank you today for putting us under a trailblazing pastor. Thank you for giving him visions and dreams. Thank you, Lord, for making a way out of nowhere. We thank you for every family in the house today, God. Thank you for those who are streaming in. We praise you for those who are sick and can't come. Heavenly Father, they're safe in your hands and we praise you for it. Thank you for every mother in the house. Mothers indeed, we appreciate you, God, for setting up such an office for a woman to be a mother. We thank you today, Lord, for the awesome responsibility to mold a life, to teach lessons, to bring forth fruit. We praise you 
for the leadership ability to shepherd them into adulthood. Today we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and all of your glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Today we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise for we ask these and all other blessings in your son Jesus' name. And the people of God say amen. amen. I have to stop because I get lost in prayer. I get lost in it. And God will keep bringing more and more and more and more. So today, I'm just going to stop with that little prayer and greet you. Mother's Day is a special day. It's a day that's celebrated all over the world. Different times, different countries, but still Mother's Day. There's something wonderful about a mother. Some mothers, we have different levels and different types of mothers. Some mothers facilitate the bringing of life into the world. But we also have other mothers. Some mothers bring value to existing lives. Uh-huh. We have church mothers. Surrogate mothers, grandmothers, got big mama, <laughs> have aunties, we have stepmothers. Anybody who takes responsibility to nurture, to watch, and to love, we can call a mother. It's not necessarily someone who brought forth a light that we call mothers because some of them certainly are not. But the one who takes that life in their hands to nurture, to watch, to love. I had the awesome opportunity in my life. I birthed two children, but I raised four. I had one, my son, I called him my son because he is. I came home from church one night, and there he was, sleeping in the room with my children. I called his mother. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning, because you know, at the sanctified church, you stay all night. It was like 1 o'clock in the morning. She wasn't looking for him. He was in the seventh grade when I got him. So I kept him for the next four years. He never went back home. That's my boy. I'm his mother. Can we be clear? Don't get confused. That's my boy. So mothers are not always the person that brought you in the world as much as the person who poured into your life, the person who gave you advice. Now, in my new position as great-grandmama, I'm a big mama now. I can call myself big mama. I understand a lot more than I did when I was young. When you're young and you have children, you have to work and you have to do the house and you have to do the husband and you have to do all of that. That's a lot, right? So I called my grandson. I said, bring that baby over here. Mm -hmm, that's how old people talk to you. Bring that baby to me. <laughs> so I sit down when I get her and I just pray for her call on God to watch a life. See, because I have time now to polish. My grandmother polished us. So now grandmothers can polish great grandmamas. I can just sit there and pray for her. She's a blank slate right now. She's only two months old. Uh-huh. Bring that baby to me. Let me lay hands on her early. Let me call on angels to watch her all her life. Let me make... Clear a path for her. Pray for her education. Pray for her safety. I, I pray the whole time I have the little baby I talked to about Jesus the other day. I told her, I said, I need you to find him when you get old enough. Let me tell you what I know. Words of power. I quote scripture to her 
all day long. Y'all, all y'all gonna wanna leave your baby with me when I get through. Mm-hmm. I feed her and change her, but I spend time praying for her because the parents, they're moving fast. Mm-hmm. I get a chance to polish. My grandmother, she polished us. Mama was busy with five children. Not only five, five Patterson children. We all had strong personalities. So my grandmother was the one who said, you need to have integrity. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody, I could hear her. Don't let anybody do anything for you that you wouldn't do for them. That's a lack of integrity. My grandmother was the one that said, eat with one hand in your lap. Mm -hmm. Don't put both your hands on the table. It was my grandmama who taught me to say, excuse me from the table. I enjoyed my dinner. She said, I don't care whether you enjoyed it or not. <laughs> I had to cook it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Grandmama's polish. So we're in our painfully passionate series. So our month of pa- painfully, pa- um, painfully passionate. So I'm coming today to talk about painfully passionate mothers. There are certain characteristics that come with the title. Painfully passionate mothers tend to see the good in their children. Mm -hmm. You can say anything you want about them, but I know there's good in them. They tend to see the potential in their children. And they want what is best for them. They have resolved expectations. I know what you see, but I see someone with a future. I see what he's doing. I don't need you to tell me that he is being mischievous. If you think mama doesn't know, you are confused. But passionate mothers say, but there's some good in him. Mm Mm-hmm. I can see it. I just need to work with what I have here and help him get where he needs to get. That's how we're charged. My painfully passionate mother had certain characteristics that brought me to this pulpit. Hmm. 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 You see, I'm the wild card in the family. Can y'all tell? Oh, yes. If there was one child that could make us stay up all night, it was me. If there was one child that would make her cry, it was going to be me. She looked at me and said, Beth Lamb, what's wrong? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh, what's wrong? But she saw the good in me. She was always trying to fix me. And she wanted the best for me, and it worked. Because I'm standing up here preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. How about that? (laughs) Painfully passionate mother. So all the mothers in the house that have a wayward child, look. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. Keep seeing the best. Keep looking for the good. Keep trying to fix them. All right, because we're going to talk about that a little bit more today. They never give up. My mother never gave up on me. She taught us to laugh at, and I still do it. We all do it. If the situation got too horrible, because we were extremely poor people, if the situation got too horrible, she was going to make a joke. And we'd all laugh, and we still do it. She taught us to laugh at our calamities. My mother taught us, I I had a very um, non-aggressive mama. I don't know if she had an aggressive bone in her body. I can truly stand here in the pulpit and tell you, I never heard my mama gossip about anybody. She just wasn't that person. She was sweet. She didn't. She, well, she yelled at us, but not other people. But she taught us to be at peace 
with each other. I don't even understand when people are fighting in the house. We, were, we, we still don't. We are all old people now. I think my oldest brother is 76. And I'm kind of in the middle in this. The youngest one is in his 60s. Let me just say that. Wherever we are, we spread like that. We still in her absence because she's going on to be with the Lord. Do not fight each other. I just think that's the most bizarre thing when I see it. We don't fight. So my mama taught us not to be. We, we, we at peace with each other. Now, I'm not saying they don't get on my nerves and I get on theirs. The last thing about my mom that I want to say was she watched me and she prayed. She watched. I had asthma when I was a child. Really bad. And there was no money to go to the hospital and the emergency room and all of that stuff. So when I'd have a bad attack, she'd sit by my bed all night long. If I, open, if I got to where I could go to sleep, when I opened my eyes, she'd be right there, right there, watching, praying. A good mama. Somebody thank God for my mama. powerful woman. I'm going to take you to the word of God this morning. Just wanted to honor my mom and all the other mothers here, surrogate mothers, grandmothers, big mamas, aunties, church mothers. I'm going to take you to a place called Shunem. There was a Shunemite woman in the scripture in 2 Kings. She is 2 Kings 4, starting at verse 8. This was a woman who was passionate about many things. But what she was, she was well off according to the Bible. She was married, she was well off, and she said out of her mouth that she was happy with where she was and what was going on in her life. A woman at peace with herself. Well, she noticed the prophet Elisha passing by on his journey, he'd be going back and forth wherever he went, and she said, I perceive that's a man of God. I don't know if it was his clothing. We don't know, but what I do know is she was passionate about giving. She said, let me call him in and feed him. The man of God needs to eat. So she called him into her house. She fed him, and after a while, she thought, she went to her husband, she said, well, let's just make a room for him in the house so he can rest on his journey. So her resources, she didn't just keep for herself. She used her resources to support ministry. Let's help the man of God so he won't be tired when he gets where he go, he's going. He can minister freely. If we make sure he eats, we make sure he has a place to go, I place to sleep, the rest of his body when he's on his journeys, then I've done my job. She was passionate about her resources and her service. She took pleasure in serving. Sometimes we have to be careful. When you get enough and more than enough, a well-off, kind of rich person, it sounds like, we lose track or we lose touch with people who need us. You, you lose touch with the fact that there are people out there who need what you have. That there is somebody you can minister to, you can share with. We lose touch. I, I, I'm guilty myself. There was conversation that I was around and they were talking about giving it was during the holidays, during the Christmas holidays and my thought was I don't really know anybody that needs anything because I've lost touch when you move out of that world I told y'all I grew up poor when you move out of that world if you don't have any interaction or nobody brings it to your attention, you can't see it. But they're out there. 
They're out there. And I'm not talking about all the people on the street corner. That's a whole other element. And we need a whole other sermon to talk about that. But I tend to give in those areas as well. Now, if you're all clean and look like you just came out the house and your face is washed and you got on good shoes, I always check the shoes out. You got on good shoes, uh-huh, then you're not likely to get a dime from me. <laughs> you can look at homeless people look homeless. They're dirty. Their face is not clean. They're, they're unkept looking. And you can tell the fake unkept. How many of y'all know the fake unkept look? Is one lady even got on bigger diamonds than I'd like to wear. Sell the ring, lady. Mm -hmm. And so the Shunammite woman, whose name we don't know, she helped the prophet. The prophet calls her in. He said, what can I do for you? And she said, I'm good. I dwell with my own people. Married to a rich man, I don't need anything. So Gehazi said, that's the prophet's assistant, she doesn't have any children. So Elisha pronounced that she would have a child by that time the next year. Talking about painfully passionate mothers. She said, don't lie to me. I can't have no children. For number one, I'm married to an old man. She knew what she had to work with. <laughs> For number two, she hadn't conceived all this time. She had no expectation. But at his word, she believed. Her reality said this can't happen. But her faith said it could. Her reality said there's no hope here, but her faith said it is hope. Sometimes you have to have faith in the face of what looks impossible. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Sometimes you have to believe what's unbelievable. Who can go with me there? Mm -hmm. In the face of a reality for her, I'm a barren woman, she had to believe that she could be a mother. She was passionate about it. She was passionate about the son that God gave her. Now let's just talk about faith one moment. Sometimes God calls us to believe the impossible. I know for most of us, we don't need miracles. And miracles don't really happen every day or they wouldn't be miracles. They're only miracles because they come around randomly and not often. Other than that, that's just the rhythm of my life. But in the face of the impossible, can you believe it? That God is still God? That God is still in the miracle working business? That he is able, we are singing, to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you can ask or think? Would you believe that I was told in 1989 I'd never walk again? I thought not so. Not because of me, but because of God. I know that he's a miracle worker, and I'm about to ask for one. God, I got two sons to raise. The daddy already dead. They need me. I need to walk. I drove myself to get my stitches out. <laughs> mm -hmm. God is still God. So the Shunammite woman, let me get to it. She was a mother because it's Mother's Day and I'm supposed to be talking about mothers. She had this son, and one day the son got sick. He went out to be with his dad in the field, and 
uh, the baby got sick in the field, had a headache. The daddy said, take him to his mama. Daddy, y'all know that's what y'all do, right? <laughs> take, him to, <laughs> take him to his mama. Well, the child gets to his mother, and the Bible says she held him on her lap, which makes me think they don't give the child's age, but he was young enough to sit on her lap. And he died. The miracle baby died. Graveyard dead, died. Mm -hmm. Reality now says this child is dead and this is over. Reality now says there is no hope. Reality for her was this is irreversible. Painfully passionate faith had to spring forward. She had no reason to hope, but her faith said, it is well. She took the child and put him in the prophet's room. Now, see, when she made that room, this is the value of how God works. When she made that room, it was no intention in her heart that she was going to need where the prophet slept to put her dead child so she could go for help. I won't accept this. I won't accept this. I'm going to the prophet. I told you don't lie to me. I told you don't give me this baby like this. And now he's dead. She put him in the, in the uh, room, in the prophet's room, and off she goes to find the prophet. How many of y'all know everything God does is good? Mm-hmm. Everything he does is good. She gets the, uh, she tells, send the word to her husband. I'm going to see the prophet. He said, well, it's not time to go. Is everything okay? She said, it's well. It is well. So you see, no matter what, I had to ask God about that last night. No matter what, what do you mean it is well? The child is dead. No matter what happened, God is good. Y'all say it all the time? And all the time, God is good. So even if this child is dead, God is good. And it is well. Either you're going to give him back to me or you're going to keep him with you, but it's well. We like to say that little saying, God is good all the time and all the time God is good, but do you really think he's good when your baby is dead? Mm -hmm. He's still good. He's still good. We walk by faith, not by sight. All God's decisions are right. And you have to know him mm. and believe in him to know that all his decisions are right. For you mothers out there today who have lost a child and you're saying, how could you say that's good? Because mm, God is still good and his decisions are still right. And I have to trust. I lost a grandbaby a couple of years ago. It was Well, it's just been one year, really. And it was a hard moment. But I had to acknowledge that God is good all the time. God gives and he takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I'm not ignoring your pain, mother, if you had to bury a child. I had to do it too. I had to sit at the graveside and watch him put that baby in the grave. He was four years old. But here's the thing. I trust you with him, God. I told my son and daddy, I said, you got to trust God with him now. Mm-hmm. Absent from the body, we present with the Lord. We believe the word. So I see you. Pastor Rick said, a day in heaven is like 42 years on this earth. Well, I'll see you in less than an hour, son. I'll be there. Pop right in. So the Shunammite woman 
put her son in the room. She said, I'm going to see the prophet. He told me he was going to bless me with a son. I'm going. She had resolved to stand in the gap. Her husband said, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. It's well. I woke up this morning. I, know, I generally wake up slow, always have. I sit on the side of the bed, give my body and my brain a chance to sink. This morning, I popped out of the bed like a piece of toast, <laughs> like a Pop-Tart. The Holy Spirit was talking to me all night long, and this came. It's not on your sermon notes because it's fresh off the press. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. So you sitting in the audience, you're not a mother, not a, a mother who birthed a child, and you're thinking this message is not for you. Yes, it is. Because there are so many out there that need you. There are so many out there that need your prayers. There are so many, I'm not talking about resources. I'm talking about love, real love. Real love, when God loves us, he said, love them like I love you. It's inexhaustible. It's not measured love. See, we have a tendency, and I do too. I was trying to help one of my kids, and it got to be like pulling teeth. Like, you know what? Why don't I just let you do what you want to do, and when you get to the end of that, I'll help you. And the Holy Spirit kind of stopped me and said, no, you can't give up on her. Mm -mm. Love doesn't give up on people. Mm -mm. It's inexhaustible. It's not measured. You're aggravating me, but can I be a little bit aggravated? It's like we build... These lives, these American lives, we live the American dream. We have our house and our 2.4 children. And see, if I don't have four, in the 70s, I looked up the stats this morning. In the 70s, people had an average of four children, above three. But now we have 2.4. Because now I can have a bigger house, a better car, and some more stuff. If I don't have all the babies. <laughs> but God, that's the American dream. We all want it. Don't act like you don't want it. We all want it. We want to travel. We want to see the world. So I, but I'm not encouraging you to have more children. Y'all, that's not where I'm going. Where I'm going is you, this is what God said can stand in the gap for a child inexhaustibly, not measured, don't give up. See, I was aggravated with my child because now you're causing me to be awake at night. I want my night's rest. But it can't always be about you. She needs me right now. And if I don't do it, who will? A charge to keep have I, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, and fitted for the sky. When you pray for some child, you are literally standing between heaven and hell for them. Them wayward kids that you just say, you know what, let them go. You can't turn them to the street like that. You're turning them over to the devil. You're the one, this is what the Holy Spirit said to me today, that has to stand in the gap with a hand on that child and a hand in heaven. You're the one, the link between that child and God. And you have to be like Jacob and say, I won't let go till you bless me. I won't let go till I see the change. I won't let go. No. If I pray 100 times, 98 of those times, I'm going to pray for people 
caught in human trafficking. For those of y'all who don't have no babies, let me help you out. There's people out there need prayer. You can be a mother, you can be a father, you can be a parent. Parenting. I pray for children in situations where they're being molested. If I pray 100 times, 99 times of those, I'm going to pray for that. And every time I open the paper and I see that they found somebody with a person in a cage or some other ridiculous thing, I say, thank you, Lord. He needs you out there praying, interceding, holding on for him. I'm telling you, I pray for the woman standing on the street corner, selling her body. That's somebody's child. Give her another way, God. Open another door. Show her. Let her see. For the man sleeping on the park bench. Just in case you don't have any kids, stand in the gap for somebody else. Amen? amen. Come on, say amen. amen. This Shunammite woman was painfully, she painfully and passionately shut out all the doubters. Sometimes with your children, that's what you have to do. Shout out, all, I see him, I don't need you to say another thing about him. My boy is going to be saved, and God's going to use him for his glory. I see the reality that you see. I don't need you to rehearse it to me. This lady said, she did not want her husband or anybody around her saying, but he's dead. She already knew that. Uh -huh, but I'm moving her in for a miracle. She didn't give him the opportunity to reason with her. Stop her, stop her. No, let me just not tell y'all. Let me just hold on to God for my child. Let me just hold on to God. Y'all, they out there, the worst one you got, hold on to God. Keep one hand on them, one hand. I have one son. I used to visit him every once in a while. I said, I just need to remind you of who you are, where you're from. I need to remind you, show up. She put her child in a safe place, away from everybody's eyes, and she went to the prophet. She, <laughs> this woman was a lot. I, I, I love it. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out, and she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee one of the young men, and one of the asses, and I may run to the man of God and come again. I'll be right back. I am going to the king about my baby. If I perish, I perish. Don't talk to me about him. Listen, you bad mouth, you know old people just call it bad mouth. Bad mouth in your own child. She was painfully passionate. She was focused, she had focused faith in God who gave her that miracle in the first place. She was resolved in her decision. Couldn't be swayed. When she got to the man of God, she expected that God would change her child's paradigm. How about you? You see him. I, you know, people act like you don't see them, like they need you to tell them that your child is doing some horrible stuff. I don't need you to tell me that. Don't let them rehearse it to you. Stand in the gap. Make up the hedge about them. Come on, mothers in the house. Somebody say amen. That's my baby. Mm-hmm. She used focused faith. She stood where mothers have always stood before her, between heaven and earth. She believed what she couldn't see. We're called to that, you know, seeing as seeing him who is invisible. We're called to that to walk by faith and not by sight. We're called to that for these children, for these young boys. That's another thing I pray for. The boy that's going to pick up a gun the day God turn him around. Too many of them locked up down there. Turn him around, God. Change his mind. Hmm. Just in case you don't have any kids, let me just help you know who needs you. She 
went, got to Elisha, and Elisha saw her coming. He sent his servant out, his assistant out, and said, go see what she needs. The servant went out, and she said, I'm not going to tell you either. I don't want the assistant. I want the man of God. In her mind, she knew this is a serious case. I left a dead child home. She refused to be turned around. Because of her passion, her faith, she refused to believe that there was no hope. Don't give up on your kids. Don't give up. We need to stand in faith. When our children are in trouble naturally, physically, or emotionally, who else do they have but you? This message turning to a trick. I know it was supposed to be building mothers up, but I need to stir up in your mind. We're losing too many, and we want to sleep, and we want to be able to go to sleep at night. So it's easy for me to say, I'm just going to let you, I'm going to turn you over to God. That's the little line we use. I just turned him over to God. No, you turned him over to the devil. I'm just going to turn him over to God so you can sleep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn him over to God. Well, here's the thing, mama. If you give up on him, who in the world is going to hold on for him? Mm. Okay, we got a dead child in the prophet's room. We got the, the, the uh, assistant coming out, Gehazi. She's like, uh-uh, I don't want to talk to you. I need the man of God. She refused to believe that there was no hope. How many of you today refuse to believe there is no hope? Hmm. You never know. Sometimes it's hard to watch. When you pray for your children, it's hard to watch what God has to let happen so that he can turn them. Sometimes they have to get locked up to get turned. Sometimes he has to arrest their movement. It's hard to watch them rising and falling. But God is still God. This woman said, mm-mm. I'm not going to take that. No, my boy is going to be saved. And God's going to use him for his glory. Because of her passionate focus, she gets to Elisha, and the Bible says she just grabbed him around his feet. I guess she had been as far as she could. I had to go through that with my husband to even get here, and then you sent a servant out to me. I have to go through him, but Elisha sent Gehazi, the servant. After he finds out that the child is dead, he sends him. Gehazi followed the directions. He came back and said he's still dead. Never give up. Somebody say it for me. Never give up. He was still dead. So, it's Elijah had given him his staff. He said, you go, so child's still dead. Some of you, you prayed for those kids. You prayed for your young ones, your family members, your neighbor's children, and they still look dead. There's no movement here. There's no, there's no change happening. He's still, she's still doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. You got to stand in the gap. You got to make up the hedge. Well, then Elisha said, I'm going. You know, Elisha, the real prophet, with a double portion of the spirit that Elijah had, mm-hmm, I'll just go. Maybe get his eye having a little problem. Maybe he didn't follow directions. <laughs> so, so here we are, no movement, no change in the child. Elisha goes in, the big prophet, and he, the Bible says he stretched out on the child. 
mouth to mouth, nose to nose, hand to hand. Elisha stretches out. The Bible says that he waxed warm. Hmm. Little change. Not dive yet, but he waxed warm. How many of you got children right now? They waxing warm. Mm-hmm. First time he prayed, no movement. Second time he prayed, he only waxed warm. He didn't move. You never know what's going on in a person's mind and in their heart. You never know he waxed warm. But the third time the prophet went in there, the Bible says he sneezed. Sneezed so the breath of life could come back in him. Listen to me what that means. When you pray for people, for children, for family members, and you don't see any movement, don't stop. Mm -hmm. Gaze, I pray I didn't do nothing. It looked like, but I suspect it did a little bit. Sometimes you can't see the little bit. The next time, the big prophet came in, the child waxed warm. A little bit of change, just not what I'm asking for. But the third time, the child sneezed. And life was restored to him. Those of you who are in prayer for your children, for your family, for your neighbors, listen. You might not even be able to tell they wax and warm. But God is able. He's able to bring them out. He's able to change them. He's able to turn them around. He's able. It may take more than one attempt to change them. Don't let people speak doubt, engage you in damaging, faith-killing conversations about your own family. Like you can't see exactly who they are. Like something wrong with my eyes, I see them. But I'm the one who can see the good in them. Mm -hmm. It's some good in them. They just need a little bit more prayer so they can sneeze. Here's my closing thought. These two people, Elisha and the Shunammite woman, had painful passion. You can see their pain and commitment to do something. Who are you painfully passionate about? Who is it that needs your prayer? Is it the woman standing on the street corner? Is it the man sleeping on the park bench? Is it that young boy that's going to pick up a gun today and ruin his life for some foolishness? It may not be yours. You may have, some people have, listen, those perfect little children. I didn't have that crew. <laughs> Get pa patiently passionate about praying for somebody. Daddies, I'm talking to y'all too. Mothers, you got to stand in a gap between heaven and hell. You have to hold on when it looked like there's no hope. First time, he didn't move. Second time, he waxed warm. Last time, he turned around. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet today. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. For your word stands when everything else fails. God, you reign. They belong to you, God. Turn them around. Every child that's going to stray. Like the prodigal son, God, we ask that you bring them back. Let them wax warm and then sneeze. Let us see the change, God. Save and set free today. Move in the lives of our children. Help them to see you, God. No man comes to you except you draw them. Draw them near to you today, God. We pray in the name of Jesus. 
every child represented in this house, everyone online that has having problems, keep them safe. Keep them safe, God. We pray in Christ Jesus' name. People of God say amen. Let's receive Miss Bishop. Amen. You can remain.